up YouTube, back at it again with another banger video. This time we're taking a look at Shatter, the first computerized comic from First Comics. So the reason this comic is special is because many people consider it to be the first digitally drawn comic. It was made with the Macintosh and it was made back in 1988. And uh, the, so, so the drawing, the lettering, it's all done with a computer. The only thing that wasn't done with the computer is the coloring. The story is very much a Blade Runner inspired sci-fi mystery, you know, cop detective type of story. And it, it opens up with uh, this little bug machine. It's a, a, a bug bomb. So they're like little grenades that can crawl like, like bugs. And we see it crawling across this police car, this guy who's hiding. And uh, they start blowing up. This guy is pinned down by snipers. His name is Jack Scratch. Well, that's his, uh, That's a fake name. Uh, a lot of people in this book have like two different names. They'll have their code name or like their, their alias and their real name. So this guy, he goes by the name Jack Scratch. And he's pinned down by these guys who set up this ambush. This takes place in the future where Vietnam is the 53rd state of the United States. And these guys are a part of like a militia that was ambushing police. So Jack Scratch, he's not a real police officer. He's what they call a temp, which is someone who is a, kind of like a bounty hunter or just like a, like a contracted person to do a job. So every job in this future universe, they hire temps, just people to, to, who won't do it as a career, but just are assigned singular jobs to complete. He's assigned to go and do these jobs that the police would normally do. And you see from this panel here, the obvious like Blade Runner inspiration, where you see like the billboards, the flying police car. And we also get our uh, credits here. Art by Michael Sains and story by Peter B. Gillis. I hope I'm saying those names right. But anyways, the story continues. Jack calls this guy. This is one of the guys who works at one of the temp facilities where uh, you know, Jack, he is contracted to do these jobs. And he says, uh, your family quarrel turned out to be a VVR ambush. I nearly got killed. Sorry about that, Scratch. You'll get paid anyway. Only base rate, no premiums. You're supposed to screen for these things. He had no answer. 21st century technology, and they can't figure out a faked call. I think that's funny because, you know, nowadays... With AI, like fake calls have be sort of become a thing. Like they, uh, you you see videos and memes of uh, celebrities' voices that have been like run through AI, and it, and it actually sounds like the person. Well, that's basically what they're doing here. Is these uh, these guys? They created a fake call to the police to get uh, them to show up, and then it was an ambush. So he survived. He goes back home, he takes one of those bug bombs with him and he's looking at it and they use a, it's basically a grenade on the inside, but it has a rat's brain in the head of it because it, it's cheaper than a microchip any day. So it's kind of half organic, half machine. So he gets paid these credits, uh, 20,000. Like that, that covers his, uh, he says it covers his rent and his heat. But in the economy of the future, it's actually not very much. So he heads home. He goes into his apartment. Again, the, these, these flying cars are very uh, Blade Runner-esque. And it, it's explaining what a temp is. Jack Scratch isn't my name, of course. I'm a temp. This guy subcontracted the cop job out to me. The Scratch is the name the car pays to. So to the Daily City Police Corporation, I'm Jack Scratch. But when I sign off and go home, that's all over with. A temp has many names for many jobs and usually keeps his real name a secret. Nobody calls me Shatter. So Shatter is, is his real name. And when he gets home, he's, uh, he's taking off his uniform and he sees this commercial on the TV. It's for uh, Coca-Cola. 75,000 credits for this rare canister of Coca-Cola syrup, pure, original. And uh, Jack Scratch, he really wants that Coca-Cola syrup. My one gourmet weakness, 
I love to have it, but I just don't have 75,000. Damn. And then he just so happens to see another co contract come in for 75,000. And this is for the uh, pursue and detain a mass murderer. So he, he bids on the job. You have to bid on the job if you're a temp. And we see someone else who he beat, you know, bidding on that contract. He says, this is crazy. What went wrong? Everything was set up for my bid. Who is this scratch? So this is the person he beat out for bid. They're obviously going to be the antagonist of this issue. But now he's off to, uh, to get this contract that he's... Uh, for this mass murderer and while he's a uh, he's flying in his car he's getting the details of the case so it says a female came through a 75th floor window of an executive building and killed 15 managers with a machine pistol so he flies out to this uh, industrial part of town where it, it's called alien nation and he uh his car is able to change like the paint on the outside and he makes it look like, you know, he's one of them driving around in an alien car. And he drives to the temp agency there at the, uh, at this industrial place. And they have a special computer there. It's just like the one he had at his house, except this one, he says that there's a glitch in it. And he's able to hack into like the database that it uses. And he gets this piece of paper. And on the piece of paper, it says, uh, I'd ask the system names of women taking high altitude transport jobs who were not regular users. The list was short and it was a promising one at the top. So he has these lists of names to go off of now. So the first name on the list, this Joni Caucus, it was a fake name, it was a temp name, just like the name that he's using. The registry was made out to an exchange at the Cold Street area. So he goes back home he makes a fake ID with this temp name on it, and he goes to the, the temp help at the, uh, the cold station, or the cold street area. So he starts running this card, trying to find out more information about her, and this guard, this is very uh, fortunate. This encounter is kind of written sort of heavy-handed. So he, he meets this this person who's working at the, at the temp station, and he says, uh, hey, you're not Joni Caucus, he says, and uh, Jack says, sure I am, I just had a full body makeover. And the, the guard says, no way, no makeover, add six inches to your height. She'd never give up that figure, her black hair, her blue eyes. And uh, he accuses him of stealing the card. And he's like, easy, I have a mind to go over to the club and tell her about you right now. So he basically told Jack everything about this woman. He, he told him uh, she's short, she has black hair, blue eyes, a good figure, and that she's over at this club. So Jack leaves. He heads over to that club. He finds the only person who matches that description. And he's thinking he's found this, this Joni Caucus. So he goes over. He talks to her. They have this little conversation. It's a short exchange. But he's recording her voice like while they're talking. And he records it onto this little device. And he takes it over to the, uh, this is the phone company building. This, this reminds me of the, the building in, in Blade Runner. Like it's the, the, even the aesthetic of the buildings, the architecture. And he purchases an ad that's going to go out to all the phones. So everyone's going to get a phone call with this advertisement on it. So he sends out this uh, this advertisement to every phone in this area and it shows like the responses that he's getting on the phone and uh, one of the responses is screw you I'm busy and he takes that recording that he re recorded their conversation on and runs it against that phrase that he had heard screw you I'm busy and it matches the voice perfectly so he finds her phone number so he finds her real name, and her real name is Cyan Dalreda. So that, that's how he, he's figured this out. And, and he has her address now, too, because of where the phone was. So, you know, what started off, he, he, had, he knew that the, uh, the mass murderer had struck a building on the 75th floor. 
And uh, so he went to that station and he found women who had been uh, at high altitude jobs. And then he cross-referenced that name, the fake name. He took it to that, that one guard who gave him basically a, a full description of what the person looked like. And then he recorded her voice and now he found out where she lives. Meanwhile, that guy who, uh, who he outbid in the job is still following him. And remember, this is all for Coca-Cola syrup, this whole thing. And he says, I could almost taste that Coke. So he gets to her building. He uses that voice recording again to uh, try and get past the, the security speaker. He ends up having to blast his way in. And he finds her. She's playing the piano. She has this automatic gun on top of the piano. And that, that's, that was the gun that was used to kill the executives in that corporate building. So he knows he has the right person. Tells her to stop the p playing piano. He's, he's taking her in. He's going to collect his reward. And uh, she somehow gets the drop on him and is able to take the gun off that piano and like hold it to his head. It, it, it doesn't really show that in the panels. I'm not sure how this happened. But she's able to get the upper hand. And they get into a little fight, and uh, she explains why she had to kill those guys in that corporate building. is because of the experiments that they've been running on people. And this is where it gets kind of like out there with the sci-fi. So she says, you've heard of RNA transfer. Done on flatworms, it transfers skills from one organism to another. Now there's a technique that works on humans. Take a skill from one, distill it, feed it to three or four people. It lasts a year or so. And they're using it. They used it on my lover. The only drawback, you have to take the person's brain out and put it into a centrifuge. I killed them and stole his RNA back. I injected it myself. And for a year, I'm going to play his music. You've got to let me. So they're stealing people's skills and, and I guess like giving them to other people or selling them to other people. Which I don't know how your skill is kept in your like strands of, of DNA or RNA. Like I, I would have thought that they would have done something like with the brain because I don't like playing piano isn't a genetic quality. But like I said, uh, <laughs> we'll move past that. It's still a fun sci-fi story. But as as he's leaving with this, uh, you know, he's found the uh, the murderer. This guy shows up, the guy who's been who's been tailing him this whole time, and. He was hired by that company, by the uh, the executives of that company who were doing the RNA testing, and he's come for that for the for the woman. So uh, Jack says, "You can have her. You just gotta pay me off." And uh, he doesn't take the bait. And as he's just about to kill Jack, that bug bomb crawls out from uh, from Jack's pants and up into that guy's boot. And he blows up. But Cyan gets away. And uh, he doesn't have the heart to shoot her in the back. But yeah, he let his uh, 75000 credit contract get away. And uh, he says, it's been a long day and too many questions. Boy, I could do with a Coke right about now. The end. So that's the first issue of Shatter. And it, it spawned like a whole series. It was it, it ran for a while. It was a, a long running book, but that was the the premiere issue. And it like I said, it took a lot of cues from Blade Runner, which had come out a few years before. I think that's like 1982, and this would have been 1988, so about six years earlier. But uh, I'm sure that was like an, a big inspiration for for this comic. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to press like. Smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.